The museum is housed in a Martello Tower and this particular Martello Tower was completed in 1805. These towers were built as defences against an expected Napoleonic invasion of Ireland. And a view of the entrance of the museum including my car there in the, in the foreground. Beautiful sunny day. One of the rarities in Ireland but uh, we make hay while the sun shines. And this is a picture, it's a uh, drawing of the museum, well not of the museum but of the Martello Tower in 1903 when an American inventor and radio pioneer called Lee DeForest carried out radio experiments here from the tower and uh, transmitted Morse code. And there is the tower in 1905 when Marconi Company conducted the experiments for the British Post Office. Uh, the tower was a receiving station, you can see the big antenna there. Back to London. Yeah. And one of the first jobs, not the first job, but one of the first jobs he got after going back to London was first radio engineer at that time. Quite an honour. And he was the last man to go down with it. Just kind of a mural shot of the wall. Just some posters on the wall and uh, some records and other bric-a-brac. You can see Audrey Hepburn there advertising a uh, pilot radio and she's certainly at the helm there as you can see. This is actually a record player and rather than the disc rotating the needle or the stylus is in the van which uh, tracks around in the grooves of the record so the record stays stationary while the stylus or needle moves around so I'll just let you hear a little bit of Oklahoma and a wide range of uh, valve radio sets, uh, all shapes and sizes. This is an early uh, Edison phonograph and before using cylindrical uh, records the music or whatever was being recorded was put onto a wax cylinder and uh, the stylus then recorded the uh, the sound onto the wax cylinder and you can see there the uh, the horn moved along with the uh, with the stylus as it played the uh, record so uh, I'm just going to go up close there and uh, show you the wax cylinder on this particular piece of equipment and here is a wax cylinder itself and the container it came in uh, you can see there the uh, the stylus moved along the uh, wax cylinder and inscribed uh, a uh, mark in sequence or in sympathy with the uh, music or whatever was being recorded and then the same cylinder was used to play back the music so as you can see it's Edison records and uh, that would be the early 20th century or late 19th century And this is the amateur radio station at the museum. The call sign is EI0MAR. And you can hear Morse code there in the background. And maybe uh, later we'll show you, we'll demonstrate some Morse code in action.
this is part of the amateur radio uh, antenna setup. We're restricted in space by the size of the roof here, but uh, we managed to make contacts, and we've two. In fact, we've three antennas on the on the roof. You're looking at probably the most spectacular one, or the most intricate one of the lot. So that's uh, that's called a cobweb antenna, and you can see why. It's something similar to the spider's webs that I had to go through to get up on the roof through the spiral staircase. And some radios again. What would you expect but more radios? This is on the lower ground floor, or the basement as we like to call it. So I'll just pan there and you can see many Bakelite sets and uh, valve testing equipment there and even a TV. You can see the TV there from the, uh, I'd say it's 1950s or 1960s. Uh, not uh, plasma or not LCD but simple cathode ray tube TV. And then we have some amateur radio equipment here, uh, some very early stuff built or adapted from uh, ex-military equipment and more radio equipment there, more amateur radio equipment. This is a selection of thermionic valves as they were called, or the Americans called them tubes. They were the predecessors of the transistor or the integrated circuit silicon chips. And uh, all electronic equipment, I suppose, up to the end of the 1950s, and even beyond the 1950s, equipment was still made using valves. But then uh, transistors and uh, integrated circuits and uh, silicon chips and all that came in, and the valve uh, was consigned to history. So there's just a sample of them there. As I said, the Americans called them tubes. But uh, this side of the Atlantic, they were always referred to as valves, radio valves or TV valves. Right, this is the Seraphon. What year is it, Pat? 1882, is it? 1884, yeah. 84. I'm the last Seraphon player left in Hall. <laughs> Volume control. <laughs> I don't see the monkey on your shoulder. I'm now out on the roof of the Martello Tower and I'm looking at Hoth Harbour and you can see the island of Ireland's eye beyond that. Uh, in the middle of the island there, there is a 7th century church which was built by St. Nesson and it was a monastic settlement or a monastery in other words. I don't think you can see it at this range but I'll try and zoom in in the next picture. I'm looking out east uh, along the shoreline there of Hoth or Balscadden Beach as this is known and just below the tower here the first cable uh, going across to Hollyhead for uh, the first telegraphy cable came ashore and then came up uh, to the Martello Tower here which uh, became a cable station so uh, I, I'll just uh, Try and take a photograph now, or a movie there of the of the beach. Uh, that's Balscadden Beach uh, there, and uh, nobody out swimming today. The restoration of the tower in 2001, almost 200 years after it was originally completed.